Hi guys, Patrick here from EngineeringShock.com and ElectronicLessons.com. Uh, just made a video demonstrating this. This is an audio amplifier uh, DIY electronics kit. Rather, it amplifies room sound or your voice. It's got an analog gain output or analog output with variable analog gain, and it's got a comparator output for square wave with variable sensitivity. And I'm going to show you how to put one together from scratch. So first of all, let's have a look at our kit. You got your custom PCB, a 1K resistor, a 10K resistor, and a 100K resistor. Two ceramic 0.1 microfarad capacitors, an LM324 quad op amp IC, DIP14 I believe, and two 50K ohm variable resistors, multi-turn for uh, sensitive adjustment, <coughs> a four pin header so that you can um, connect to your breadboard easily, and an electric microphone. So first of all, let's talk about the resistors. You've got your three resistors, 100K, 10K, and 1K. R3, this is all labeled on board. R3 is 100K, R5 is 10K, and R1 is 1K. So if you don't know how to read resistor color code, that's cool. Use your multimeter. You will have no trouble, trouble, trouble figuring out which is which value. Now, you've got uh, R2 and R4. Now, you want to make sure that the screw on the top of the uh, variable resistor, which is your adjustment, faces from a bird's eye view the screw portrayal on the footprint. Uh, for R4, it's labeled comp. They're both 50K, so it doesn't matter what you use. Uh, but this is for your comparator adjustment at the second stage. And this is your uh, analog gain variable resistor, labeled gain. So as you can see, again, Screw, match it from a bird's eye view to the sides with the screw label on it. Solder those all into place, and next we'll do our capacitors. C1 and C2 are your 0.1 ceramic capacitors, your 0.1 microfarad, sorry. They're not polarized, place them in either way, place them close to the board, solder them into place. We're also going to get the header done in this step too. Now you can do this now or at the end, but I'm going to show you how to do it now. You'll notice that there's a side with the short pins and the long pins. You have an option here. You can put the sh short pins facing down, and you can wire wrap those connections to another circuit, or you can do what I typically do and uh, place the short pins facing through the top so you've got the long pins on the bottom so you can have it soldered to a breadboard. Now, if you do it this way, which is the way I'm going to do it in this video, uh, you can solder on the top because there's uh, there's a, 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 a tinned layer on both sides. So solder those into place. Next we'll do the IC and then finally we'll do the microphone. Might be a little bit difficult to see here, but on one side of the LM324 quad op amp IC, there is a notch. As you can see on the breadboard, the footprint for IC1, which is the LM324, has a notch in it. So make sure that when you're placing it, that from a bird's eye view, the notch on the chip faces the notch on the footprint. If you solder backwards and you power it up, you're going to fry your chip, and God knows, it's going to be so hard to desolder that chip. So make sure, that is the biggest, biggest thing about, about uh, putting this kit together. Make sure that you have your chip in the correct orientation. And when you're soldering it, make sure you're very careful not to short anything. If you do short anything, use your solder tin or your solder sucker to make sure that that short is cleared before you power it up. That goes for everything on here. No shorts. Uh, once we're done soldering in our IC, we're going to lastly do our microphone. This step might be particularly hard for you to see, but you're going to get what you need to know out of it. The microphone will be placed here. Now there's two pins. There's a lot of uh, a lot of pad there, so we're going to actually flood it with solder in a second. On the left, it's labeled mic minus. Uh, MIC minus. On the right, it's labeled mic plus. What we're going to do is we're going to flood that with solder before we actually perform this step. Now, from the bottom view of the microphone, there are two pins. One pin has a little green speck next to it. That's your negative. You want to make sure that that pin with the green speck next to it is soldered to the mic minus pin. The mic plus pin should be soldered to the other side. Now, the best way to do this, I prefer, is to, you can actually bend the mic leads out and put it through the holes a little bit, but I prefer to flood the leads with solder first of all, 
then solder one then just uh, reflood it by adding some heat from your soldering iron placing the uh, the mic minus the, the the lead with the green spec next to it in the hot solder let it let it cool and then press the uh, positive pin the pin not connected to the side with the white, the green spec heat the already flooded solder and push that lead down into it so what I'll do is first of all I will flood those leads then I'll show you what I mean I can't very well show you the next step uh, to do it uh, because it requires a few hands at the camera but uh, what I'm going to do is I've spread out the two wires the little two pins on the microphone just a little bit and I've flooded the two areas with solder and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my soldering iron to add a little bit of heat here to the mic minus pin and from a, I'm going to place it standing up I'm going to pl uh, place the uh, the negative pin dip it into the hot solder and I'm going to let it cool and once I've done that I'm going to uh, apply heat to the mic plus pin and push the other pin down into it while it's hot. Now you can do this yourself. You don't need to baby me to baby you through this step. It's an easy step, but you can go about it as you wish. I'm just trying to show you how I do it. And uh, once we're done that, we're going to pop into a breadboard and we're going to test it. Now that I'm done, I've popped into my breadboard. The pinout label is actually on the left here. You can't see it. Each pin has a number from one to four on it. Uh, from this perspective, the last, leftmost pin is 4, rightmost pin is 1, pin 1 is ground, pin 2 is square wave output, the output of the comparator, pin uh, 3 is the analog output, and pin 4 is 5 to 9 volts. So I've got my oscilloscope probe. You can put, a, you can put an LED at the output, and I'll show you that in a second. But uh, first of all, let's just test our analog and our... Our, our analog out and then our comparator output. Hi guys! Looks like it worked! Yours should too! Again, this is the output of uh, the op amp. I can vary the gain using my uh, onboard variable resistor labeled uh, gain. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the square wave output, the comparator output. Just give me one second. Hi guys, hi guys, square wave output here. Uh, I can make it so that it's more sensitive or less sensitive. Right now I'll just give it a clap. Good for a clap circuit because it's not picking up my voice. Uh, the schematic will be available so it makes a bit more sense to you. Uh, as well, I talk more about this in the, um, in the demonstration video, but good for a clap circuit. While I'm here, I might as well... Uh, make it a bit more sensitive just so I can show you that uh, you can make it really sensitive or not sensitive at all so right now it's pretty sensitive hello 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 that's a square wave output that would be what you'd use for a clap circuit the other one would be used for a, a preamplifier the analog output would be used for a uh, preamp but I can keep turning the voltage reference on the comparator down until it basically becomes so so hello that's my voice and square wave it's so sensitive right now that it's always going to stay high if i'm very quiet and so what i'm going to do is i'm going to turn it left a little bit and it'll stay at low very sensitive it was really cool these are 10 turn pots so you can really get a good sense of uh, of adjustment on the analog gain line and you can make the compared to square wave output really sensitive or not sensitive at all. I know that many of you aren't going to want to use an oscilloscope with this. You don't a lot of you don't have oscilloscopes. So let me just I just placed a uh, an LED and a 470 ohm resistor uh, between the square wave output and ground just to show you. Hi there. My name is Patrick. Sorry to scream in your ear folks. You can adjust that, and you can use this in your uh, clap circuits, or your. you can use it as a preamp. You can do a whole lot. Again, there's a square wave output uh, and analog output, with, and they both have the analog output. has uh, The analog uh, op amp has variable gain. The voltage reference for sensitivity on the comparator output, the square wave output, is variable. You can make it very sensitive, not very sensitive. Easy to build a kit, relatively inexpensive, 
and as long as you watch this video you shouldn't have any problems putting it together. So thanks for watching. I'll have this available with its schematic at engineeringshock.com. Take care guys.